Frugosim videos are powered by Jetline Systems. Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and welcome to another Tip Tuesday. We're going to talk today about how prepared helps you understand this mess that's on the screen in front of me right now. What we're looking at here is a, a world VFR chart, obviously around California. So you can see here, here's Los Angeles, his Riverside up here, Paradise VOR, Ontario, Ontario. I never know how to pronounce that, but one of those is up there and John Wayne International is down here as well. The reason that this is so confusing is actually all of these little lines here. What we're talking about are classifications of airspace. So first of all, let's look at these maroon lines. This is class Charlie airspace, which means that when you enter that airspace, you have to contact air traffic control at the airport and let them know where you are. So specifically, which direction you're heading, which altitude you're at, what speed you're at, and what kind of airframe you're in. You'll notice as well that there are numbers in this airspace. So but this 35 to 44 means this is class Charlie airspace between 3,500 feet and 4,400 feet. Similarly, this is class Charlie between 2,000 and 4,400. And this is class Charlie between sea level, SFC, and 4,400. More important than class Charlie, though, is class Bravo. You need permission before you enter a class Bravo airspace. You cannot enter this airspace without permission from air traffic control. And typically, you will talk with them to route through it. It's called traversing the Bravo or crossing the Bravo. Around the busiest airports in the country or in the world, there is Bravo airspace. We're talking about in the country, though, because obviously this is a U.S. chart and I live in the U.S. So this is Los Angeles. And you can see the class Bravo airspace actually steps down towards the airport. So this is between 8,000 and 100 feet. 5,100 feet, so getting lower on that lower level, 2,000 and 10,000 feet, sorry, not 100, 10,000, 2,000 and 10,000 feet, all the way down to the runway itself, obviously at sea level. Class Bravo is obviously the scarier and more important of Bravo and Charlie. There's other types of airspace as well. There's a link that I'll post here at FAAsafety.gov, which details all the different airspace classifications and how they work. Now, we do simming, so why am I showing you all these charts and talking about all these charts? Let me show you in the sim. Prepared has a really, really cool feature, particularly if you're learning to fly, which will help you understand where these airspaces are and how to interact with them. See you in the sim in a second. All right, so just taken off from John Wayne International in California. We are in some crazy, crazy busy airspace, and I've got my uh, autopilot there warning me what I should be doing. How about? I'm using the autopilot because it's just easier to explain and point stuff out to you guys. Let me pop open the Flight 1 GTN 750 here. And you can see these markers here. You see blue lines here, magenta lines here, and here. These are airspaces. Now, with something like the Flight 1 GTN 750, by the way, you don't need this to do what I'm about to show you. But you can already see here, this airspace here is controlled from 3,500 to 4,400. You can actually click on that airspace and you can say, Give me the info and it'll show you Class C from 3,500 to 4,400. That's the Santa Ana airspace. So that's pretty cool. But what is more cool is being able to actually visualize all this stuff within the sim. And the way that we do that is very simple. What I'm going to do is turn this aircraft around. So we're heading straight back the way we came. So let me just change heading hold here. Like so. And we will just skirt the edge of the Santa Ana Class C airspace right here. I don't know why I'm still getting beeped up by my autopilot. Oh, because I'm turning, obviously. Oh, no, we're going to the left, so we're not actually going to skirt that airspace. Well, what I can do now is I can go to Navigation, Navigation Visuals, and I can enable Facility Visuals. Now, this tells Prepare that we want to turn on helpful visual aids within the sim that show us any of these things, weather stations, icons, jet airways, Victor Airways, airspace boundaries, airway intersections, ILS feathers, which is so cool if you're learning how to land. Uh, NDVs, VORs, attack ANS, and of course, airports. So what we need to do is just click and hold on airspace boundaries. So I'm going to do that right now. You can notice there is a magenta line here and a blue line here. Click and hold. Boom. And it turns on. So as we come out of this turning here, you'll start to see some blue over here, maybe, or maybe not. But we do have this magenta stuff here. There's the blue right there. So let's click on this and see what it says. So the airspace info for Los Angeles International is telling us 9,000 to 10,000 feet at that part of the airspace. 
So that's not really going to bother us. It's actually higher up than us. We're only at 3,000 feet. But there is something right in front of us. You see, there's quite a way out. We can find out what that is, and that's probably this airspace right here. We'll click on Los Angeles International. Let me just trim this. Need to trim down a little bit. And that is 7,000 to 10,000. So that's, that's getting closer, but you can already see that there are various airspaces overlapping each other. More importantly, there is an airspace directly to my left. There it is. Multiple airspaces kind of overlapping each other, and that would be these ones. So 2,000 to 4,400 is this airspace right here, which is, again, a Santa Ana airspace, another part of it. 2,000 to 4,400, yes, if we were to turn that way, we would collide with that airspace. How useful is that? That is navigation visuals. So once again, go to navigation, navigation visuals, enable facility visuals, and then click and hold on what it is you wish to see. So, for example, let's turn off the airspace boundaries. Now let's turn on the airway intersections. Now you're seeing airways. A lot of airways intersecting around here. Pretty wild. Let's turn that off. Let's turn on airports. Do we have any airports nearby? We actually do. I just can't remember where they are. Hang about. Uh, there's one back there. I don't know why that's not showing, but there is an airport, obviously, right there. We can turn on ILS feathers. Look, now you're seeing the ILS feathers from that airport immediately behind us. How amazing is that? Really useful for, inter for visualizing how to intercept a particular ILS uh, needle. And obviously VOR's attack ads, we can turn those on. And if we had those tuned in, you'd be able to see where they are. So airport, sorry, navigation visuals and prepared. A very, very powerful way of learning all about these very complex things called airspace boundaries, which I'm just approaching one now. I'm approaching this one. Not entirely sure why that is. That seems a little bit low. Let's click on this and find out why it thinks we're about to collide with this one. Uh, 8,000 to 10,000, so that shouldn't be bothering us at all. But anyway, you get the basic idea. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you all very soon. Actually, it's not. It's that one. It's that one there. Sorry. Hang on, let me click on these. These are so hard to click on sometimes. It's way out. You see, we're nowhere near colliding with it. It's going to be this one. It's going to be around here or even this one up here. Yeah, 2,500 and up and so on. So it's going to be one of those. Anyway, I'm sorry. As always, my name is Frugal. Thanks for watching. See you all very soon. Bye-bye.